have a close look at that. Run. Jennifer, do you know this man? <laughs> He looks somewhat familiar. Yeah. <laughs> Cal Botterill, thank you for joining us from Winnipeg. Hi to Doreen. Uh, for those who don't know, Cal, preeminent sports psychologist in the world, uh, at least 10 Olympic medals, Stanley Cups, the whole bit. But what makes your life a unique, uh, Cal, obviously, is your dedication to uh, the life and death arena of medicine. Uh, that's your book I showed last night, Sustainable High Performance, which was for ER that you co-authored. And uh, I'll just give you uh, a chance to tell us what you think of the situation with the Canucks return. It would be unfair without the facts to say whether you're comfortable with it happening, but you might want to include that because we're looking for perspective. How do you feel about tonight? Well, I think that, um, you know, in, in the end, the level of demands in every profession, including hockey, I mean, you know how much faster hockey is than it was when we played it and the demands of the game. So you, you, then you layer on a thing like the pandemic and you start thinking what this might do to people. I think for sure I was glad that the players spoke up because uh, they're professionals and uh, I was around them for a long time and watched them and most of them are so thorough in their preparation and in their recovery and their equipment and, uh, and their fitness that uh, they, they need to prepare properly to protect themselves and to perform well. Uh, like we all have to remember, you know, if we don't have health, there's not going to be a lot of high performance. And uh, I was glad that they spoke up and that the League and Players Association responded. And, and you've spent much of your life helping people to perform well in different circumstances. And, and this is, is a unique situation for the Canucks. How do you think that these players can approach this competitive environment but still remember to try to enjoy the game after these emotionally exhausting few weeks? Yeah, I mean, it, it's both a personal and a professional challenge. And professionally, we can do it. We can focus on the moment pretty well when we need to. And there, we see all kinds of great examples of that. But, you know, in the long run, we got to realize we got to look after ourselves so we're sustainable and we can do it over time. Uh, and what I think has happened in society without not that many people noticing is that the demands of careers and life today are so much greater that I would I wager that seventy percent of our population is suffering some form of under recovery before the pandemic. And then you lay on something like this, you know, with the physical risk and the emotional uh, stress of it, it's clearly a huge challenge. You just think of the players' wives through this, and if they're at home trying to, you know, look after and protect the family. You know, and then their husband comes home and in some cases maybe even brings the virus in. I mean, it's a crazy, heartbreaking situation that they're facing. And our doctors are the same, and our nurses. I, I really don't know how they're doing it. They're amazing. They're taking on so much and trying to do so much. But one of the principles you learn is you've got to look after yourself. Somehow you've got to look after yourself to be any help to other people.